Uh, James is an independent consultant. He's an ex-colleague of Anna's as well at uh, Headshift years ago. Um, and he'll be talking about place baking, which I'm interested to hear more about. Thank you. Thank the floor you. is yours. Um, and, uh, look, that's a good bit of scene setting because I'm a big believer that you know, face-to-face -face is the best method of communication, but you can build relationships with people online. And I think the interesting thing about that meeting in the lift is that um, I wasn't disappointed because I feel like we know each other already. Um, this picture here, by the way, I was in Melbourne. So I've come from, uh, from a place near Sydney called Wollongong to come to this conference this week. Um, last weekend I was in Melbourne visiting the art gallery and there was a really interesting exhibit when you walked in. It, it combines three different cultures into a massive um, exhibit that you see here. Um, I couldn't even capture the whole thing from where I was standing. But the reason I, I, I use this as a title slide is again to highlight the role of technology. This, none of this is real. I mean, it's a physical exhibit, but it was created based on technology to scan the original versions of these and to, to print them or create them. So this exhibit wasn't possible without the use of technology. Um, but it's a real physical exhibit that when you walk into this gallery, it, 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 it just stops you. It's intriguing. It's interesting. So for me, technology is not a zero-sum game that we virtualize everything and suddenly all human relationships, all face-to-face -face physical relationships just disappear. There's a time and a place for everything. So keep that in mind as we go through. Um, the, uh, oh, I'm missing a slide. Well, hang on, keep, bear with me, all right. Well, I had another slide um, just from walking around Lisbon yesterday. And I wanted to start again with another question here about what makes a place? And importantly, what makes a workplace? And if you think about what makes a place, and this is where the idea of placemaking comes from, is really around urban design, is taking places that are unloved or unhealthy communities and trying to create things, interventions, activities, um, resources that turn a place that isn't functioning, that isn't good for a community, and turning it into something that is good. And often there's a big focus on um, you know, the health of communities, safety and security. Um, we're going to take some of those ideas and apply them to Cablelink. And hopefully we'll give you some ideas to, to think about in your own organisational context as well. Um, here's a, a book. People familiar with the Mr. Men? outside of English speaking, yeah. Um, this is a real version, this is a real book, Mr. Nobody. And there's been a great series of talks this morning that some of this leads us to, is that um, when I looked at Cablelink and I saw these very tactical problems around knowledge sharing, too many files, too many emails, um, not able to collaborate, these are very tactical, functional problems, and I'm sure, I'm convinced that Cablelink will find some technology solutions to those today, notwithstanding any cultural barriers or management barriers or leadership barriers to that happening. Um, but what I'm more concerned about, and, and really I'm coming with a different argument to Cablelink, is to actually think about the, the people at the grassroots, not the leaders, but the people at the grassroots. And I see an organisation that's facing a lot of uncertainty, it's in instability, um, it's a distributed organisation, um, you know, and around the idea of productivity that we started the morning with, I believe that's actually a limit to how much we can pull the lever of productivity. Um, surely you can use software well or not well, and that will affect your productivity, but it's not, not, it's not everything. We can only go so far around productivity. And I think conversations around ESNs, the digital workplace, are often about arguing how we use them for a productive outcome. But I'm worried about the people in the organisation. I'm worried about the people at Cablelink. Um, now, I'm not going to go through the research, and there's plenty of it out there around employee engagement. Um, I'm also looking at my experiences with working with organisations that are moving into new office spaces, working with interior designers. And I can tell you the issues they're focused on at the moment are things like well-being, um, about um, sustainability, um, about giving people a community in the workplace. And I think for those of us that live and breathe virtual, digital, collaboration, enterprise social networks, all these electronic collaboration tools, we're actually missing out on a very important conversation that's going on inside organisations. And um, we need to sort of get on board this track and actually take 
uh, our place on the table around placemaking within the workplace. And that's to deal with issues like um, certainly well-being and health, but also loneliness. Loneliness is a huge issue in the workplace. Um, and also purpose, which again has come up. And the idea of digital placemaking in the workplace is about addressing those factors. If we address those factors, it's not going to solve everything. But it, we're gonna actually going to engage people and make them feel like they're not a nobody in the organisation. They actually have a contribution to make. They're part of a community. And that's what, what we're trying to talk about here around workplace placemaking. Um, so what do we mean by digital placemaking? Again, I'm going to start off with what's been happening in the, um, the world of urban design and, and placemaking in communities. Um, there's lots of different examples. Here's a game that was set up on a massive billboard in an area. Um, it's an interactive game. So you, a member of the public, could just walk up, have a friend, and you could play a, a game on a huge billboard. And the purpose of that was just to create interest. That's one example of digital placemaking. Um, you can use digital placemaking as part of the process of placemaking to engage communities on what they want to do with a piece of physical space. And you can also use uh, or think about digital placemaking from an infrastructure point of view. So if you're going to have people coming into an area, you want them to use it and use it in a positive way, maybe you need to provide public Wi-Fi. Um, maybe you need to provide charging stations. People who came through airports in the last day or so, um, airports are finally getting on board with the idea that people want to be able to plug in and recharge. It's becoming commonplace. That's part of the placemaking process. In an airport, of course, they want you to stay, um, spend money, all those sorts of things. In, in the community, we're actually trying to make use of space to have a positive impact. And that's what digital placemaking is about. So we're going to try and apply this idea to Cablelink. Um, I'd like you to imagine that Cablelink's digital workplace is a collection of connected neighbourhoods. And that's the physical offices, it's the factories, it's also the, the people who are working outside in the community who are out in trucks, maybe some of their consulting engineers. Um, the digital workplace isn't this productivity platform. It certainly has that role. But for what we're doing here, we're trying to create, create a set of connected communities, individuals, teams, buildings, places across Cablelink. Because that's one of the problems I see is a very distributed company um, with lots of differences. Um, you know, people are, are not really connecting with each other. Now, how can we go about creating meaningful connection? This is an example from Selfridges, the the famous department store in London, they have what's called the Team Tunnel. And they have a very big digital display where they share news and stories of what's going on within their organisation. And it's strategically placed in a zone between where staff are sort of behind the scenes, their, you know, their, their cafeteria, their tea rooms and what have you, and actually the storefront. So as people are moving between back of house and front of house, they go through the Team Tunnel and they get the chance to see some of the communication. And that's great for frontline staff. Um, now you can see here they say make, tell, share, share your story with us at storymakers at selfridges.co.uk. So they're, they're inviting um, their staff to share stories with them. Now I think that's a good first step in terms of digital placemaking, but we're going to try and go a step further and actually empower people, not just to submit stories, but to really suggest that we want to have people involved in owning the, the, um, the actual um, sort of process of placemaking within their workplace. So it's not a communication strategy in terms of broadcasting out. Again, there's place, as we heard, area for leaders to have those conversations out into their organisation. This is, again, about getting into the grassroots and trying to empower people through a process. Um, what does that involve? Um, let people plug and play. And I literally mean that in both senses of plugging, i.e. give them the resources so they can connect. Um, we hit, we've heard that the, the, the canteen is a place where people share knowledge. But can they get online when they're in the canteen, for example? In this organisation, which is REA Group, um, they're an online real estate marketplace in Australia. They're very te a very technical company, technologically wise, um, as opposed to Cablelink. But there's some similar ideas here where they use wormholes to connect teams in one office with other offices. And a wormhole is literally a video connection. Um, so what I'm saying here is we need to remove the barriers to, to make it easier for people to actually connect with the technology. And again, this is going beyond the productivity scenarios we might normally think about. This is just to help people literally connect and see each other. Um, we should provide space for social support. Uh, a payment company, Stripe, this is their um, people space, their people site. It's like an intranet that's really just focused on connecting people with each other. 
So social support is really important. You might say, because there's no real direct productivity um, end to this tool. It's not about helping people share documents. Um, it's not a communication platform per se, although there's some announcements there. Really, the key thing for this site is about connecting people to people. Another concept is also about making absence visible. This is a, 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 an agency called RGA, and in their um, New York office, they've got a sort of flagship uh, staff cafe area with massive screens around this area. And what you're seeing here is a digital display that's actually showing activity on Slack. Um, there's research from the University of Sydney that highlights the fact that people who, are, who work remotely are often, feared, often fear that they're forgotten. And actually, when you think about it, in any organisation, as soon as you can't see someone, that worker's remote to you. Even if you're in the same building, you can actually be a remote worker. So it's really important that we help to make people visible. And again, it's not a direct productivity outcome we're aiming for here. It's just to make sure that people are seen as being part of an organisation, that they're not forgotten. And um, you certainly need to curate events and content and activities. Um, this is um, not, not really a particularly digital solution, it's just a nice picture um, to highlight the point that we're shifting from the idea of communication to curation. Um, now, Anna, this is going to be interesting because I think the slides are slightly different, but we'll see. Um, so there's a number of ideas there about how we go about digital placemaking. This social now is all about technology solutions though in service of, of different outcomes. So one thing I want to highlight for Cable Link is, as again, I'm sure they're going to find some really great te technical solutions um, through this process in the next two days. But I don't think they should discount what they've got and be able to use the space, the technologies and the capabilities they have um, in creative ways. Um, for example, this is just, and I won't sort of push up any particular vendors here, but you know, some of the platforms, for example, let you do simple things like create your own um, uh, emoticons, emojis, um, animated GIFs, and they can reflect some of your organisational culture. They're just sitting within some of the tools you can have that help to personalise the experience, but again, make that tool unique to your organisation, different groups within it, so they can express themselves. Some of them will let you actually upload, people can upload their own um, emojis, they can create their own. So this is what I mean about actually giving people at the grassroots some control and ability to, to customise and be creative within that environment. I'm also talking about the idea that you may not think you have within Cablelink um, particularly um, useful tools for placemaking, but sometimes you've just got to think differently about them. And, and David's um, experience with using Zoom is a really good example where for most people these are, you know, Zoom is just a video conferencing tool. But David actually turned it into a, a knowledge cafe tool. So sometimes these tools are actually right in front of us, we're just not using them very well or, or using them differently. So again, let's think about what, let's put some of these ideas more into sort of um, actual concepts that you might be able to apply here. And there's quite a range of things. And some of these things can be very digital, which is great when you've got a distributed workforce who all aren't in the same place. But some of them can be also very physically located in a place to help us co make connections with those places. And again, there's not a, this is not a one-size-fits-all approach. Um, and some of these ideas have already come up this morning. And they range from things like virtual lunches or coffee meetings. Um, and you can use um, you know, basic video conferencing to do that. Workplace would be a great solution to do that. Other VC software as well. Um, you can have um, systems to create profiles of people. And that might already exist in your SharePoint intranet or if you've got a, a specific intranet tool to do that. Um, presence is, a, is an interesting one. That's a bit like the RGA example where you're just trying to show that people are there. You're not, again, you're not trying to uh, um, provide an action or an outcome. It's just to say, hey, there are people doing things around the place. And this is what they're, what they're working on. A bit like working out loud. Um, you can have pop-up activities, and again, this could be a real physical activity in a place that you then broadcast to everyone, or it could be an online pop-up activity, a bit like a jam, for example, where you run a, a, a structured conversation online to get people to, to talk to each other. Um, the roulettes are the ideas where you might have the random coffee meetings or random lunches. Um, storytelling, I think, is important. And just bear in mind, when I talk about storytelling, this isn't about corporate sto to storytelling, of people um, having a crafted message they want to share that's perhaps in support of the vision we've talked about. I think that's important. Though, again, we're not discounting any other strategies here, but the idea here is to let people use the software to tell their own stories. Just to give you a very quick example, um, I was in an organisation that allowed people in, in a wiki just to create their own personal space and they could put whatever information they, like, they liked in that space. Now, we were trying to find someone with a particular skill 
and it didn't come up in their personal profile in the system, but in their own space they'd written a bit about what they were interested in, a side project. And we actually discovered someone who could help with something because of what they'd put in that little bit of space. Now again, I'm not trying to drive a particular outcome here, but what I'm saying is that we need to let people tell their own stories within the workplace, not just the ones that fit within your particular strategic um, uh, paradigm or boundaries. Um, cr uh, challenges we've heard about, crowdsourcing could be anything where we're trying to get people to help each other. And that could be a peer assist, it could be exchange of skills and knowledge, but again, not necessarily about what's in the workplace. You've got lots of engineers in Cable Inc. I can bet you they've got lots of um, other experiences or skills that aren't directly relevant to their job, but they're interested in sharing with each other. And you can use the platforms to do that. And finally, we've talked about wormholes. So there's lots of different ideas that you can apply at Cabling to your own organisations that draw on the different tools that you have out there um, to create that sense of place and to hand it over to people. Um, now, the one I, I sort of was also missing from the earlier deck was just about the point about that you actually enlist these same technologies in the process of placemaking. That's just Microsoft Planner. You could use um, Trello or any kind of other, other Kanban tool for this. But you know, if you were sort of thinking about planning, how do we want to drive or what do we want to do for our digital placemaking, well, make that visible to people. Let them participate. Get people involved with actually designing what your digital placemaking um, uh, ideas should be, rather than putting them in the hands of one person. Again, this is about getting this out to the grassroots and letting people um, uh, participate in the co-design process of digital placemaking. Um, also, I think there's lots of opportunities for Cablelink to then say, okay, we've looked at what we've got to work with. We've got some key platforms we've put in place. We're not looking for a brand new platform for digital placemaking. The good news is there are lots of tools out there that you can hopefully plug in or, or implement in a very sort of lightweight way to fill the gaps where you either feel you don't have the right capabilities or you're looking for a particular outcome. And there's just a range of examples here. You know, Tango Works is a, a tool for doing enterprise bots. We've got Donut, which is the roulette idea of, of coffees or lunches. Um, any pixel is actually a way of making interactive um, displays. It's an open source framework provided by Google. Feed Full is to getting your social media onto screens. Never Eat Alone is a, is a lunch pairing app. Um, Sideways 6 is an innovation platform that works with Workplace and Yammer. Um, I mentioned AWS. Um, the tools you have probably have an API, and you can often build very lightweight curation tools or, or you know, different little solutions um, using your, your core platforms, but host them in something like AWS so you don't have to ha ha sort of stand up servers. Um, I built a very lightweight um, blog curation tool for Confluence. Um, using Google App Engine, minimal hosting, zero cost, ongoing cost, all built with a little bit of JavaScript. Um, Swoop Analytics has got some great tools for, for curating um, social networks. Perch and Owl Labs provide some interesting video conferencing um, solutions. Perch is a sort of a, a wormhole for, for small teams. Screen Cloud is a digital display system, and 10,000 Coffees is a mentoring tool that um, recently announced an integration with Workplace by Facebook. So there's a whole, this is just a small set of examples. There's a myriad of little tools out there or platforms that can help you um, build what you need for your digital place making efforts. How am I going for time? One minute. one minute. So, if you take away one thing from today, from my little, um, I guess, pitch to Cablelink, is that digital place making, or peacemaking even, um, place making in the workplace is as much a philosophy as it is a deliberate activity. So again, it's about saying we've got these technologies, we're trying to address things that aren't about productivity, um, you know, we're trying to actually make people feel like they have a community in the workplace. For Cabling, we're trying to connect people across all these dis disparate places. Um, and we're gonna put technology in the service of placemaking in the workplace. Now, you then have to think about your activities. There's not an off-the-shelf solution here. Cablelink needs to go out and drive this process for the organisation to see what would provide meaning for the employees, what would help them to connect to each other. But again, you've got a whole toolkit of possible technologies out there to help you do that. Um, one final example, this is Reddit Place. I don't know if anyone's seen this before. It's from a few years ago. And they allowed users to change the colour of a pixel. A single pixel, you could change the colour. And they, they ran it as an experiment. You can actually go online and watch the YouTube video, time-lapse video. And it's really interesting about how that um, community, that online community, um, uh, sort of came together around this little, little, this little activity and what it, what it sort of meant to um, Reddit, 
how it reflected the culture of Reddit. Um, and it's just, a, you know, again, it's not productive. But it does create a sense of place within an online community. So, yeah, definitely go and have a look at that. Thank you very much.